Ethan is in El Paso, Texas. Ethan, your question for Dr. John Deloney. Hi, Dave. Hi, John. My uh, question for today, I'm an owner of a manufacturing company that's focused in plastics manufacturing. We're a third-generation family-owned business. We've been doing business for 70 years. So we have close to 100 employees. Our top-line revenue is around the $20 million range. Um, and on one hand, things are going very, very well. We are debt-free, um, and I feel more in control of our business today than I did 10 years ago. However, when I look at the statistics of family-owned companies like ours, it feels like the odds are stacked against the third generation. You know, I've heard upwards of 90% of third generation family owned businesses fail. That has so nothing question, to do with three generations. Okay. That has to do with the people. That's a good point. That's a good point. So my, my question is about that, that lingering fear that's in the back of my mind. I, I'm afraid that we will be the generation that, that cur- screws that it kills, up. Yeah, it screws it up, and that fear paralyzes me at times. So get that fear out of the back of your mind and put it right in the front. Put on a piece of paper and be very specific. What are you scared of, period? Mm-hmm. What is it? Or question mark. I, what, what are you scared of? I mean, I'm scared of everything that we built and everything no, that— No, 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 no. I, You're going back to the back of your head. Put it on the front of it. Do you have a child that is not acting right? Uh, I, I, no, it, are you saying like for a, uh, like, like an employee in the business? No, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to ask what, I want you to get this, this fear out of the ether, put it on paper. Mm-hmm. What are you scared of that you are going to do? That's a fact. Or that one of your kids is going to do. I want you to be specific. Because here's what you're doing. You're walking through the woods and you're thinking, I got, I think there's bears. I think there's bears everywhere. I think there's bears everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I want you to stop and demand evidence from that fear. What am I actually afraid of? Running out of money? Nope, we don't owe anybody any money and I've got this much reserve in the bank. The world not eating plastic? Nope. Because <laughs> if we're there, then we've got bigger issues, right? Like, like what, are, what are your actual fears? Because right now, it sounds like you're anxious and what you're doing is you put on a lens that says, the third generation fails and screws up the whole family lineage. And so everything you see is, is fulfilling that narrative. And so I want you to take those glasses off and begin to demand evidence from these fears. Be specific. What are you scared of? I mean, again, I don't know if this is back, back mind thinking, but I'm scared of what I can't control. I'm scared of, you know, economic fears, new technology. Yep. Um, competitors that oh, are good. larger than us good. that, you know, we, we hear that they are down to working three days a week. We're, we're not. We're working five days a week and we're working on overtime. And, yeah. you know, we, we've, not, we've not seen the, the pressures and, the, and the, the negative things that they're seeing. Yeah, and I agree with you. I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm in the woods. Keep going. Keep going. You're, on, you're right on it. Keep going. You're getting more specific. I love it. Yeah. So uh, uh, to recap, the new technology, man, the the 3D printers that are out there, the different equipment that um, you know can can give people the ability to do what we're doing. Uh, that 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 makes me afraid. The economic pressure. Okay. The competitors. Outstanding. So you just took it from this very personal, existential end of the family tree. I'm going to be the one that kills the family tree. Mm-hmm. to a, a lack of understanding about a new technology and how it may alter our business. Because that's something you can go take a course on. That's something you can get on an airplane and go sit with the best manufacturers in the country who are using 3D printing and learn about and find out, hey, we got to make a major business pivot ASAP or we're going to start teaching courses on 3 I don't know, and, but now you've identified the thing. And Ethan, would you agree with me? that anyone that is in your business, first first generation, second generation, third generation, eighth generation, is facing exactly the same thing. Yeah. Has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with the magic third generation of failure. It's just the, it's just the marketplace that you're in. Has Mm -hmm. absolutely nothing to do with this. So my point earlier was, 
the the thing that um, if uh, okay, my grandfather passed away of a heart attack, and so when I do a life insurance exam, they say who died in your can who died in your family of a heart attack, who died of cancer, who died of whatever, because they want to try to figure out if I'm going to be susceptible to the same thing, right? Yeah. Now, if I know that that I'm susceptible to any of those things, it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to die of a heart attack. I could die of a car accident. The way I drive, it's actually more likely. <laughs> <laughs> I could die, I, you know, but this if I sit around and obsess about heart attacks because that's my destiny based on the statistics, then all of a sudden I have a heart attack. So that's my problem with this data because the data is a that says that the third generation fails has very little to do with, okay, here's why the data is giving you a false narrative. We actually did a study on this because I got so pissed off about it. So family businesses last on average 20 years longer than any other kind of business. So normal business cycles take out businesses in about two generations. Family businesses seem to be able to survive because new technology and competitors and foreign trade and whatever comes on the scene. Something cycles through and family businesses on average last about one generation longer, about 20 years longer than non-family businesses. So normal business cycles take people out on business. And it's not based on the generation, and it's not based on the gen the gene pool just got so thin by the time it got to you that you're pitiful. And that's what that narrative says, and that narrative's false. You're actually probably stronger and have a better chance of going forward. And some of the longest-lasting businesses in history are four, five, six-generation family businesses, not publicly traded businesses, not some other magic form of ownership or something else. So it is not your destiny to fail based on a generation. It is your destiny to fail if you don't respond to marketplace indicators, which is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And you, anybody will fail. First, second, third, publicly traded, anybody will fail if you don't respond to those things. So don't believe the narrative that there's something inherently wrong with the third generation. Believe the narrative that family business is inherently stronger than any other form of business. I think the irony here for this company, what you and I are doing, Dave, is you started what you do in radio. And radio's dying. Radio is transitioning out. And we're on a podcast now that didn't exist. Right, this technology that we're doing didn't exist. The but word didn't exist. That, that's right. Much less the medium. And it's we got YouTube, right? We got these different things, but underneath it, what are we actually doing for our customer? And so I think this could be a moment where maybe your business it literally is. They're gonna in in a year, everyone's gonna have a three D printer in their house like they do a microwave, and suddenly, so you got a year of an on ramp to figure out how we're gonna pivot this thing out. What are we gonna do next? And maybe you're not making plastics in, in a year. You're doing something else. But what, that's, that's the reality that's before you. Let's jump right into that. Let's don't sit and get paralyzed by this fear in the forest. Yeah. There is nothing that says that third generations fail more often than anybody else. 80% of small businesses fail in the first five years. That's first generation. Hmm. That's SBA statistics. So this narrative that's out there, and also the same narratives out there on wealth, that the third generation squanders it, mm. you know? And that's just simply not true. That's one of those old wives' tales that is running around out there in the culture that somebody just made up and a bunch of poor people believed it. Mm. And so they go around telling each other, well, wealth doesn't really, you know, it ruins a family. It doesn't ruin a family. Family is already ruined. Wealth exposed it. It was a bunch of doofuses, and they got some money, and they exposed it because they do doofus in a reality show then. You know? I mean, it's like that's what happens, and the same thing's true in business. So, Ethan, you got some bad numbers, and you bought off on a narrative. I think you're probably a better business guy than your grandpa was and then your dad was, and you're already addressing the variables that are giving you real fear, and they should give you fear. Those are the things you need to go after and face head on, like John said, front of mind. But this vague thing that somehow 
the gene pool thinned out by the time it got to you is just bull crap. The numbers don't back it up. And yeah. so you're a hero. Go get them, man. Go get it, dude. Man, Face the fear and run right at it. About as good as it gets. That was eye-opening to me when I found out that family businesses on average last 20 years longer than non-family businesses. Yeah, I've never heard that. That's fantastic. Isn't that interesting data? It kind of just puts that whole wives' tale bullcrap notion to bed. This is the Entree Leadership Podcast.